We are not striving for perfection. We are striving for growth and progress. So remember that. And also remember that number three, missing one workout does not derail a week, a month, or a race build. Okay? Welcome to the I Race Like a Girl podcast, where a professional triathlete and an age grouper talk all things sport and life. We are here to educate and enlighten, but most importantly, to keep it real. We are your hosts, Amy Woods and Angela Nate. Let's race to it. And happy new year. It's Amy. I know we have not done an intro in a long time, but I am here on this hundredth episode for season three to tell you that the audio on this particular podcast that we just recorded is just a little bit off because we had an issue with the mic and I fixed it as best I could when editing it. So it's a really great podcast where we look backward on 99 episodes and we look forward to 2024. I know you're going to like it. We'll be back with a better mic next week, I promise. So thank you again for tuning in and have a listen. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the I Race Like a Girl podcast. Welcome to 2024. It is actually New Year's Day, and we are back from our two-week break. It is our 100th episode. Like, I feel like all the stars are aligning. (laughs) And we are actually back together. Angela and I are back together after a two-week break from each other. Angela just got back from. I need to like travel across the. I know to get away from me. (laughs) Angela just got back from a really awesome two week vacation with your family in Maui. How was that? It was awesome. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, my brain's not all here, so. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you're pretty jet lagged. Um, So this is not only January first, which is a new year. You kind of get to reset, kind of open the new book the 365 page book, a blank slate. Uh, But we are here to celebrate our 100th episode. By looking back, we asked people to send in their favorite episodes, we're going to share some of ours. And then we're going to use some of those things we learned from those episodes to send us into 2024. And as athletes and coaches, we're going to help you and each other set some intentions for 2024. I'm not even calling them New Year's resolutions. What's your, what's your intentions? Let's just jump to the gun because I have not thought about this. You, oh, okay. So one, okay. So we'll just Amy, start. Amy, for one thing, has a plan. Right now. I, ha- I always like, have a plan. Let's just, let's Angela just, just flipped the scripts on me. But you know what? Why don't we? So I was on a walk today with some of our friends. We did a New Year's walk. It was fantastic. And of course, you know me, the teacher, at the very end of the walk, I said to our friends, I said, All right, everybody think of one word that they're going into 2024 with. Of course I did. And and our friend Beth Ann, if she's listening to this, she said, Oh God. <laughs> I'm with, I'm with I know. <laughs> but But immediately, I said, go with your gut, like the first word that comes in, because you overthink it. And so as you're thinking out here now, what is the word you're thinking of? What is the first word that popped into your head? So I'm going to put you on the spot first. (laughs) Before we start looking back, what is the first word that popped into your head? What is one word that you can carry into 2024 with you? Like if you could describe your intention for 2024 in one word or something a, a word, like a mantra, but just in one word, what would it be? Well, I, I can't think of the word, but maybe you can help me with the word. It's um, uh, letting things come. Um, like, L- oh, letting things come to you. So not no, being... No, not necessarily letting things come to you, because I don't quite believe in that. Okay. That you have to create your life, but not... Like, I, I'm such a planner in like, okay, I'm going to do this race, I'm going to do that. And right. Do that, blah, blah, blah. And it over, almost overwhelms me too much sometimes. And it's just like, I don't get to enjoy the process. So oh, wait. I, um, oh, the, I was going to say the process because one of our friends said the word present, like mm-hmm. be present, but that's not quite, I feel like that's not quite yeah. what you're saying. Like enjoying the process toward, toward races, events, or like, I like, we have our camp coming up. So I'm like already like focused on like, I'm not enjoying the, the build. Uh huh. So maybe your word is process. Maybe it's process. All right. So immediately my first word 
was determination. And that's what came out. And I don't, it just kind of jumped in my mind, even as I was saying it, I hadn't pre-planned it. Um, and I think because I still have a lot to overcome um, to going into 2024. And, and it's, we've talked about this before. It's kind of exhausting when you're kind of getting over an injury and managing things to keep plugging away mm -hmm. and to stay in it through doctor's appointments and your exercises and being positive and so, the quote I got you for Christmas is really, really good. Oh, is it? George okay. George Mumford. This is just a quote. A quote George book. Mumford. I listened to a podcast, and that's where I got the book from. Okay. And he works with a ton of professional athletes. And anyways. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just finishing up Hidden Potential. Remember, I yeah. should have said it right in the beginning. We are going to be doing a book talk on Adam Grant's Hidden Potential, and that will be my next book. So my word is determination to kind of keep plugging away at this, you know, build. It's funny because usually it's like gratitude or something like that, but I think I have to be determined um, to kind of get to where I need to be. So you did flip the script, but I like how it started because we've got process and determination. So you're now thinking of what's the first word that came into your head to set intentions for 2024 um, without any judgment on what that word is. Sometimes I like having just the simple words mm -hmm. versus like, I'm going to lose 20 pounds. Or I'm oh, gonna yeah. I'm going to do that because it just puts so much pressure on you. Whereas if you do have like a word or a very set thought process, mm -hmm. then those goals or those outcomes that you want to achieve kind of just happen naturally almost because you're focused more on what it takes to get to that versus like, oh, I, you know, I have to do this. I have to do that. Right. Yeah. Uh, like, no, this is my mindset now. You know, it's a, I think that's why I was saying like, let's not make resolutions. Yeah. And that's kind of, I just kind of wanted to change a little bit. And some people, you know, will even take that word, put it on a post-it, put it on their bathroom mirror, mm -hmm. um, to remind them every day, um, to be that word or live that word. word. So easy to remember. Mm hmm I mean, you're, you say that be strong, like mm -hmm. in a race, it's not some big, long drawn out speech you give yourself. Um, <laughs> so let's then let's go back to our hundredth episode before we get going and sharing some of your favorite episodes, which has been really cool to hear them. Did you ever think we'd get to the hundredth episode, Angela? No, but I actually have to give you massive kudos right now because I I would probably have not gone past 20. You think so? <laughs> well, because you do all the, the behind yeah. the work stuff. I just won't do that. <laughs> Determination. And you make sure it's we get one out every week. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's me, no, but you, yes. <laughs> well, and so I think I'm, it's funny. We... I don't even know if we've fully actually talked about this on the podcast. This is very meta talking about the podcast on the podcast. Um, but thinking about going back to why we started this. And I remember I was like, we, I just felt like you had a lot to offer people. I've heard, even before we met, I heard you on podcasts mm -hmm. and I was like, you're really fun to listen to on podcasts because you're very open and honest. You're not trying to, be like super like I have to say the perfect exact thing like you're just very real and so and that's obviously everybody listens to the intro every um, week you know most importantly we keep it real and I thought there are there weren't a lot of podcasts out there by women athletes for triathletes a lot of it was men no offense um, <laughs> to the men listening and I thought you know we have two best friends one is a pro, one's an age grouper. We're both coaches. We have very similar goals at times, but very mm -hmm. different goals. Mm -hmm. We do the same sports in a slightly different way. And I was like, this is a, this, it's just a pretty cool angle to take. Mm -hmm. And we just have fun talking to each other and throwing whatever out, whatever is in our brain, whoever we want to talk to, out to you, all the listeners. And I think our biggest thing is we just want to make triathlon accessible and fun. Like even, and I know you, I you always hate it when I say it's even you who do, who does this as like your job, which I know you don't like me saying, but this is like, you know, you're out there on the line with prize money. You still love it. And it's all about, it's all about having fun mm -hmm. and, and not letting yourself get too big. And it's funny you mentioned this. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, 
put my dad on. Well, my dad doesn't listen to podcasts. Maybe he does. <laughs> maybe he does. But he was asking me, I don't know, we were talking about things and stuff. He's like, he's like, it's like, how long are you going to do this for? Mm-hmm. Like, for my entire life. This is how I yeah. live. He's like, well, you're not going to win. And like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, first of all, it's not about winning. And like, it just, it, it, it really hit, triggered me. Yeah. And I was quite upset about it at first. But then I'm like, his mindset, because he used to be a bodybuilder. And he, he, he did bodybuilding until he got second place. And he was, he was out, he was done. Oh. So that's his mindset. And I don't know, we were talking about different injuries I've had over the years and stuff that's happened. And he's, he's like, he's just giving me that look like, like, why, like, why are you doing this? And I, and I said, well, why not? And he's like, well, you're, well, you're not going to win. And I was like, well, that's not what it's about for me. And he's like, well, then why do it? And <laughs> he just couldn't comprehend mm-hmm. the fact that it's like a way of life. And it's the reason I do it is because it's fun. It's like, mm-hmm. like, why do you do what you do? Like, and it was, it was so hard for him to comprehend what I did. Mm-hmm. And, um, I still don't think he quite understands, yeah. but yes, it's, it's, it's more about the process and fun and enjoyment. And I mean, I couldn't imagine my life without swim bike run in it. I, I yeah. love it. And so, and I love the challenge. I mean, that's the biggest thing, but for someone who's not an athlete like that, it's, he, they just like, what? what are you doing? <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, I even get that a little bit as I come back from like an injury. It's like, yeah. Oh, maybe it's time to give it yes, up. That's what it was. Mm-hmm. I'm like, give, like, no. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, people pivot, you know, people pivot in sport, but I think if you like sport, you find things to do, whether that's swim, bike, run. And some people do give up running. That's not going to be me. <laughs> um, but it's funny. Like, yeah. If you, if you think of just the outcome goals and that's your, that's your carrot I mean yes it's good to have the carrot but if that's your end all be all like you're Mm -mm. gonna fail like you're you're not always gonna be out on top like you're just not and that's just comparing yourself to so many different people and like I would not enjoy myself every day and I think that's what happens to a few athletes that decide to retire or decide to Mm -hmm. do different things because they haven't really enjoyed what they're doing in the end because it's all about outcome yeah it's all about being on top Mm -hmm. yeah I get that save that for our uh we're gonna come back to that outcome versus process as we finish this podcast looking ahead to 2024 to give you a few things to think about um but yeah so we have sat down in front of this mic 100 times a couple times actually well maybe maybe like 97 when I've done a couple interviews without you when you're traveling but And we just get to hang out and share our thoughts with you. And we, before, again, we get started in sharing your favorite episodes, Angela and I just want to thank you for tuning in every week, for emailing us, for listening, for sharing um, your thoughts and telling other friends about this podcast, because it makes us uh, really grateful when we hear that we say something or we interview somebody that helps you out because that's the goal. It validates the reason to do this. It does validate it. It does. It does. <laughs> we like to just hang and chat. All right. So we are going to start with, um, we're going to start with a couple of favorite podcasts from actually our co-coach who coaches with Angela and Aid Coaching, Tanya. So, hey, Tanya. Um, so I'm just going to read some of her favorites and maybe you will uh, agree. So one of her favorites, I think is one of yours, was When the Shit Hits the Fan, (laughs) which is where we talk about race and training mishaps. And she says, the discussion about the bird poop, I was dying. And I believe this also was the one about the St. George World Championships. I was at the St. George race too, like Amy, and got caught in the water during the monsoon. The episode just reinforced that it's not what happens to us but how we react to it, which it so is so true. And that was the point of that podcast. And to laugh at your yourself, <laughs> they laugh at your mishaps. The second um, episode that Tanya really liked was the champion's mindset, which we recorded recently. She says, just so many nuggets here and difficult to choose just one. What really resonated with me was the discussion about how to conquer hard workouts. I just happened to be on a two hour run when I listened to this one and the comment about counting to get through difficult intervals. I was so happy to hear that as it is what I already do. 
I've invalidated how I try to approach difficult moments. The counting makes the time go by fast. And every time I'm on a hill, I count to 50 over and over again. And this whole podcast continued to reinforce not only sport, but life. Things can be hard, will be hard, but how we approach them is key. It's really funny about the counting because I never was a counter until uh, I think I counted in Lake Placid Swim mm -hmm. and I was counting my strokes. I, w I usually do that if I, uh, I, I sometimes do that if I panic. I wasn't panicking. I was kind of just like trying to reset. Um, so the counting was good. Yeah, I was doing it today on the bike ride. Oh, were you? Oh, yeah, on the way home because you were exhausted. Um, another one was the benefits of being on a team. Um, Tanya says, so real. I love why the name I race like a girl fits this team. Women empowering women. It attracted me to the team right away. Um, and then our two most recent ones were patience and square peg round hole. And the square peg round hole, she said, I giggled the whole way through this one. What this one reinforced to me was that we can have the best bike, the best technology, and results may not come from those, but from us, from us doing the work. And of course, the influencer, that's how I started it. It again brought me back to, we are in charge. We must do due diligence on influencers and most of all, to have faith in ourselves. Tanya, that was such an awesome email. And I mean, all of these, which is one of the reasons why we're doing this podcast, remind us of intentions to take into 2024. So we really appreciate you and really appreciate that email. Let's move on to um, another teammate and friend, Lindsay. She says, it's hard to choose, but probably the one that speaks to me the most and has played a role in some big changes for me, along with Angela as a coach, Angela coaches Lindsay, is the possibility of what if a new way to look at goal setting. And I think this is going to ring a bell for Angela. Um, Lindsay says, like most people, all of my goals used to be time or speed based. I wanted to average a certain mile per hour on the bike. All of my runs had to hit a certain pace or it felt like a failure. If I didn't win, I was disappointed. We literally just talked about this like four minutes ago. Yes, goals are meant to challenge us and push us. But what if they're actually holding us back? Once I started racing with process goals, nailing nutrition goals, and racing with myself, I suddenly started asking myself, what if? What if my previous time, what if my previous time goals were actually putting limits on myself? What if I just go see what I can do? What if I stop saying I'm going to hit a wall at this pace and just let myself go? What if I stop looking at pace and follow my heart rate? What if I get to the finish line and gave everything, but I don't win? When we go out and nail our plans and give it all, it's always a win and you'll never be disappointed. Thank you, Amy and Angela, and Happy New Year. Thank you so much, Lindsay, because like we just talked about, and as we look toward 2024, I think sometimes we set these goals and it's okay to set big goals. Like we should, and we can speak them out loud. You should speak those goals out loud. But knowing that, you know, you might miss it, but you tried. And knowing that it isn't just about miles per hour on the bike, because it could be windy, it could be rainy, <laughs> like you just don't know. And you know, obviously, that's what you're saying. But it really rings true, especially as coaches. And sometimes the comments I get from athletes about like, oh, I wasn't very fast on this run. I'm like, well, that's not what we're going for here. <laughs> so I really, really like that. Um, and I love the change that she's had with the last year or two that I've mm. That's what I'm most proud of. Yeah, I know. So I know. Very cool. So thank you so much for that. All right. Then we heard from, this was, I think we, oh, this was the podcast Get in the Zone. And we talked about heart rate zones. And Kristen says that her favorite thing, and we still have to, was Angela's exertion scale from dead to a bear. It makes me laugh every time I see an RPE workout, rate of perceived exertion, or someone makes a comment. And that was when we were trying to talk about from zero to 10. And we still have to make that yeah, t-shirt sure. from dead to a bear. And the bear is when you're being chased by a bear. Yes, that's 10 plus. Um, and then Kelly, Kelly liked two episodes. Um, and this one, this one was funny because we haven't come back to this in a while. The entire episode of Angela's backpacking in Pennsylvania with the guys. She says, hilarious. It's so relatable to my 20s with my husband and the guys and all the adventures we went on. 
That one was so funny. It just, I felt like it just kept getting worse and worse. Well, no, the first day was the worst. That's what said it. <laughs> it actually got better. <laughs> Did it get better? Oh my God. It just kept going. <laughs> and then um, from Kelly, the other one, an interview one, uh, was the interview I did with Dr. Ackerman of the Female Health Initiative about menopause and perimenopause. Uh, Kelly says it was a real dose of where the science actually is and lots of room for more studies for women our age. Um, and then Kristen also commented again, just like Tanya, that she really liked the champion's mindset one. Um, and she says, it's the coaching pep talk I needed. I go back and listen to it regularly, especially a few days before a race and race morning, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, so thank you. Those are some of the emails and comments we got about those favorite episodes. And then I asked you to name a couple episodes that stood out to you. So what were yours? Yes. The first one I was the effort attitude because that's when <laughs> you <laughs> showed to me and to the podcast. Like, um, I think when we first started the podcast, you were very, I, I not, Prim and proper, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Proper, like yeah. very particular about what we had to say. You yeah, edit things. Out. We know, Andrew, we can't say. That. We need to sit it here. Yeah, and that was the one podcast where you just said "eff it." I and know you had, you had so much to say, and it was really. Um, I loved it because it 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 showed me like growth in you as well in your mindset. Whereas I think you were a little bit like Lindsay and yeah, but I mean, you aren't always about the outcome, but your whole mindset changed to letting go of, you know, the people pleasing a little bit. Yeah. Like you, you kind of draw, like we all get into that mindset. Um, but I think it was just, it was a podcast where you had some massive growth and, and you basically <laughs> Yelling out to the world, and I loved it. <laughs> yeah, I mean that came about with my foot injury, and I, I was pool running, mm -hmm. and somebody was like, "Aren't you embarrassed to pool run?" Like, no. And I was like, "Fuck no, I'm not embarrassed <laughs> to pull run." And um, and and it was like a couple other things had happened. Somebody was talking to me about something else, and I was like, "Oh," and it was like about I think it was actually after camp last year, mm -hmm. and so many people were worried. Of, we had come into that camp and we're actually going into another camp where everybody's worried about being slow or not being good enough or being judged because they can only swim 50 yards without taking a break. And what is everybody going to think of me? And I was just like, you guys like, fuck it. Like just go be who you are and yeah, go do it are. where you are and be proud of whether you run a 15 minute mile or a six minute mile. Like it, literally doesn't matter because you're doing the thing you know and and trying to be perfect on social media and only showing that one face and and I think I'm getting fired up right now thinking about it because we just it's just as we look to this next year just being authentic mm -hmm. which I think is part of this podcast mm -hmm. being truly authentic um uh as if you didn't know we weren't faking it <laughs> Um, all right, I'll let's go back and forth. One of my um, one of my highlights for the podcast was actually just recent. It's one of our more popular podcasts, and we're actually going to get her on again in a few weeks. Uh, was fueling for athletic performance with Laura Reese from Child Boston Children's, and she really talked a lot about under fueling and about how we should be fueling, which we all know, but she said it in so many different ways with some really good concrete stories. She works as a registered dietitian. She's an athlete and it really resonated with me. And I think with a lot of people, when we think about one of the things that came out of that for me was, uh, I might've thought I was fueling enough and I still mm -hmm. might've been under fueling. And we actually for those of you who actually just spoke to her, the episode, the new episode is going to come out in a little bit. We dig a little deeper into undercarbing, mm -hmm. um, and that was fascinating. We had just talked about that. So and I think a lot of us mm -hmm. just get in the mindset like we can do a workout, we feel good about it. We're kind of on a high on endorphins. We don't necessarily feel right after, and then say we have a good day, and then the next day comes and we kind of do the same thing. And so we get into this mindset that you know we don't necessarily need all the fuel that 
that we should have. Yeah. Because we felt okay. And you, know? you still like, feel good. Yeah. You're, you're hitting yourself. your workout. It's like, you know, day after day, those go on or week after week, let's say we lose a couple pounds, we get a little bit more fit, we're doing great, but it will hit you at some point. And I, I think if you're not knowledgeable on the amount of food that you actually need, or even just being a little bit aware of it yeah. or questioning yourself. Cause I, I, I mean, I'm the same way. It's like, Oh, you know, I, like I should like, or you think you ate enough. You think you ate enough. Like yeah. there's so much different things. And that's where I think a lot of like, you, you have to be continually aware of it constantly. Um, especially as a female, because we all want to look good. We all want to, you know, we all get compliments when we look fit. Like mm-hmm. I got so many compliments, um, like from, um, some of the pros I'm friends with when I was starting, I mean, I was fit and I was ready to go for the race for Cosmo, but I was lean mm-hmm. and, you know, I got so many compliments and it feels good about that, yeah. you know, but it's, it's, um, in your head, did you know, like, you're like, yes, I'm lean for this race, but I know after this race. Yeah. Like I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on like, I can't lose any more weight. No, you can't. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. you were right on the edge. In that mindset, mm-hmm. you can get into that yeah. moment of like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I get these compliments. You feel mm-hmm. good. You feel good. Yeah. You know, you're strong and fit, but it's not something to carry 24 7. Like, you just can't. No. And spoiler alert, this is exactly what I talk about with Laura in that interview that we did um, coming up and relate it to myself as to what happened. And mm-hmm. when you think you're doing okay, and you might not be. Um, so I love talking about feeling and nutrition. I love learning about it and looking at it from all different directions. And, and even when you think you know what you're doing, you know, you always have to revisit, like you said. So that was a really good one. All right, what was another one that you really liked? I love chatting with Renee Kiley, yes. who's a pro triathlete. Um, she's my age. And so we had a lot in common in the sense of, you know, what's next for us? What, what's our goals for this year? Uh, this past year, she decided not to try to qualify for Kona. And she did a variety of mixed, uh, mixed races and she had some ups and downs. If you were to look back and yeah. you follow her on Instagram, a bit. but I just related with her so much because she had a full-time job as I think it was, I can't remember what her, she was in like corporate, corporate stuff. And she just quit it all because she had this extreme passion for triathlon and it resonated with me because that's mm-hmm. what I did. I mean, I did it with no money. She, didn't have <laughs> she did have some money. But, like, like, at, at a later stage. but it's just, it's fun to talk to her because we, we had a lot in common and I learned a lot from her. And I feel like she asked a lot of questions about me, like after the podcast. And it was just fun to relate to someone mm-hmm. um, that's kind of in the same realm that I am and maybe pursuing the same goals or not. Um, and I just, I love talking to people that, that kind of give up on certain things and not necessarily give up, but like she stopped being in corporate because she was like, you know what? I want to do this right now. And I love that passion of mm-hmm. do that because it's not about how much money you have in the bank or like, it's, it, it's just following your dreams. It, it, it's yeah. following that, that, that inner goal that you have or, or desire that you want to try to do. And she didn't know if she was going to win or not. She didn't know if she could even do it, but she pursued it anyway. And I love that. Um, so it just, it just really hit home with, with me. Yeah. And that actually is one of our more, our most, one of our most listened to podcasts as well. And I think a lot of people resonated with that and also just resonated with her story, mm-hmm. how she was overweight yeah. and a smoker tried a triathlon and then just went all in and completely changed her health Mm -hmm. and her life. The whole, like anything is possible. So, and that is Renee Kylie, uh, be better than ordinary. That episode, if I were more on the ball, everybody, I would have the numbers, but just go back and search. If you have not listened to that. Um, another one that stands out for me is, uh, the relationship advice for the athlete with John Wyman and I think two parts. It was two parts. Um, and it stands out for a lot of reasons. Like, first of all, it was an emotionally charged podcast for I think both of us and for, for mm-hmm. me to like listen to you talk to John, who you know. And I just like my heart was like so big that day in so many ways. Um, and then just l- thinking about how we deal with our partners. I, I loved when he talked about bids 
Mm -hmm. Uh, and it made me rethink, you know, what I do and how I react to my husband and things like that. And it was just, it, it just gave me a lot to think about. And he was fantastic. Uh, also another big one that was listened to and shared a lot, um, well, I, I think a lot of times we, we focus on ourselves so much that yeah. people that are around us, like even the bids within the context of friends or yeah. any type of relationship, really, um, it just makes you a little bit more open and aware and like putting yourself in other people's shoes and that perspective changes. And I think all the little tidbits he gave, it's not only for your personal relationships with your significant other, but especially like your your friends, the people you hang out with, it's, it just changes your whole mindset when you're, when you're thinking about, like, I was just with my family that I haven't seen for two weeks for, I mean, I haven't seen for five years for two weeks. Right. Just the little bits that were processed and put out within the context of like, say my mom and dad together, but also with my mom and myself, my dad and myself. And it was just, it was a good two weeks because it, 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 cause you get these skills and you develop them and then you don't see these people and you have to interact. And, um, mm -hmm. it's just, it's just so many good things in those podcasts. I felt. Yeah. And you Relatable. before, and before this podcast, we were just talking about the work it takes, not only for a relationship, a significant other, but for yeah. friendships mm -hmm. and bids are like reaching out with a text message. And I think it reminds that podcast when I listened to it reminded me Oh, and even now talking about it to just be grateful for that time you spend with each other mm -hmm. or connecting with friends, with family and with your significant other and being present. Mm -hmm. Um, and because life is short, mm -hmm. um, and we tend to be myself included, tend to be glued to our phone and, you know, our computers and doing work and responding to people. But when somebody's right in front of you, to put that down and I think just to relate on that like the last two weeks that was my goal was not yes. social media I mean I, I put in a little bit at the end but and really I I preemptively did all my athlete my athlete schedules except your husband <laughs> <laughs> whoops but I did everyone so that I could just have that time and just not be on the computer and it was such a great time yeah like I, like, I, like I have not done two weeks and not really like I opened my computer twice for Strava <laughs> <laughs> and I checked in with my athletes here and there but it was it was something that I didn't go to every day you yeah. know and like had to do stuff and I preemptively told them and it was and it was just it was such a reset too mm -hmm. and I I just it made like I guess that that goes back to the start of this podcast is like what was my what was that word and it was enjoying the days you know versus like always programming ahead thinking ahead thinking ahead and um the time with my family really helped me kind of like oh I need to I need to just just reset and then the, the the person I'm with is such a in moment person yeah and I I I love that so much yeah I just because I'm not that either you yeah, know what I mean and it challenges mm -hmm. me so much like you can just sit here yeah <laughs> or like you just He's just always in the moment, you know? Yeah. And, and like, I'm always a little bit ahead, like thinking ahead, thinking ahead. And, um, I'm that way too. Having the time with my family, it just, it just brought that back too. So yeah. that process feeling. Is, yeah. Is, oh, I love that. Um, all right. Are there any other ones that yes. you want to share? So we have a good friend, um, Christine, mm -hmm. Sarah, who I miss dearly and I wish she would live in the game. <laughs> yeah, we're trying. <laughs> She's come on the podcast a few times. She's a physical therapist, so I can relate to a lot of what she says, and we can go back and forth. And she just gives out such good insight. I know, and brings it real for people. You know, like people have questions, and she can give tidbits and stuff. But it's really going back to the basics for a lot of things. And she comes from a background of working in the clinic, and and just the experience that she's had. She's also an athlete, mm -hmm. and so she just brings everything relatable to people. And I love that people can ask questions and we bring them to her and she just gives concrete examples and feedback and little tips and tricks. And I just, I think that's such a valuable thing. And I think it comes down to knowing yourself and learning and she brings that learning process back. And I, I really, really like that. Yeah. And I like, especially that she 
she's open to doing it. Yeah, and she understands the athlete. Yeah, we're, we're going to have her back on. She understands the athlete mindset. You know, she's she's never like, you have to stop. Unless, yeah. of course, she has told me that with bone injury. Like, nope, you're done. But kind of looking like this is what you can do. Mm-hmm. And this is how far you can kind of push. And what I really love mm-hmm. about her, she's not a BS person. No. She's, like, she's a no BS person. Yeah. Like, she's like... That's that. That's how I was when I worked in the clinic. Mm-hmm. Like we would have, like I'd have patients come in, and I'm just not like woe is me type person, mm-hmm. and, and she isn't either. And I just love that about mm-hmm. her. <laughs> She's like, here's what you need to do. Like, like even when I text her and talk about my gluten. You know, I did a bunch of stuff, and, and like she's just I no bullshit. Like you need to do more core work. Like if it's, so <laughs> and it's just fun to have that with her. Uh-huh. And, like, even the stuff like when 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 you were getting your diagnosis and, and feedback and mm-hmm. stuff, I texted her. I'm like, okay, we need to be on the same page. <laughs> and then she's a no BS page. You know? Well, you know, it's actually, and, and the bottom line is she's very knowledgeable and very bright because way back with Iron Man Placid, she was the person who suggested I might have like a stress reaction or a stress fracture. And nobody else was saying that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, no, no. And she's like, well, maybe. And I was like, okay, but like, I'm just going to keep going with my gluten core stuff. And then at the end, she was right, which she did say one time. She wanted to be like, I was right. She said it very gently. Um, and so she was right. And that's what she wanted in a PT. <laughs> um, and so we will have her on again. She has been, like I told her, our most frequented guest. We should make her a t-shirt. We should make her a t-shirt. Mm-hmm. Um, and she can wear it with pride. <laughs> um, but yeah, so those are some of our favorite podcasts and things that have made us think. And as we look toward 2024 and season three, uh, we're really excited to just bring you a lot more content, whether they're interviews, race recaps, race previews, or just mindset stuff or stuff as coaches, how to improve your swim, bike, run, strength. You know, we're here to help you get better, feel better, and be your best self, which leads us to 2024 as we set our intentions and all of the things we talked about, you know, give us something to look at for 2024. So you talked about the word uh, process Mm -hmm. and we talked about process versus outcome goals a little bit. What are, as you look toward 2024, like, what are some things that you are thinking about, like, to set yourself up? Because even though we might not be writing down New Year's resolutions and things like that, like I said in the beginning, you kind of turn this page to the next year and you feel like, okay, this is a chance to reset. Mm -hmm. So what are some things you are thinking about in this year to come um, that's helping you to giving you some direction? Yeah, I think what, what, what's helped me is so what, the last two years, I really um, kind of challenged myself in the mountain biking, the gravel racing, and triathlon. So I kind of was trying to do it all. And it was fun, and it was a really good experience. But I think for 2024, I want to hone in a little bit more because uh-huh. um, I would love to get to Nice. Yeah. And that is an outcome goal. It's yeah. I'm not, and it's funny because I was talking to my parents about this, bringing this back to them too, is like my mom – was saying, oh, we love following you, but it's like when you don't get to Kona, you don't get your goal. It's like, oh, I'm like, but mom, that's not what it's about. Yeah. It's like, yes, I have this goal. Mm-hmm. I have this carrot, but it's not the end all be all. And, yeah. and like to them, it's like they don't quite understand. That. Yeah. Like they, they, they want me to do well and they want me to achieve my goals, but they did, they themselves, I think because they're not in the process of being an athlete, just don't understand how much I love the sport. Like, well, let me interrupt you a second because I'm looking at it now from a parent perspective. Mm-hmm. When you see your child not reach a goal they want, like, mm-hmm. like with my daughter, mm-hmm. when she tore her ACL a second time, mm-hmm. and immediately we knew that was the end of her gymnastics career, which she wanted to compete at college, yep. like she was good. It was intensely heartbreaking Mm -hmm. and so I think mm -hmm, so I think that they and even like I'm coming out of this daughter where my parents are just like overbearing no I'm just kidding (laughs) no negative Uh uh-huh like like saying quit because you're oh right what no 
<laughs> I think it's heartbreaking for them every time because they yeah. know how bad you want it. Just like for me, like when I follow you in your races, like I just, I feel that too, but I also know you're going to be okay. Yeah. And, and, and I know that it's just part of the process as an athlete. So, but however, I understand I understand that. I just see it also as like yeah, no, your I, mom. I they're it. like, oh gosh, I yeah. I hurt for her. Yeah. Even though it hurts for a second, but I and guess then you my move on. Mindset just is like, okay, I I I've fallen. Yes. So pick myself up. Yeah. And keep going. Yeah. You know, like that's just how I've always lived, and so and that's I sport. get a little bit annoyed when it's just <laughs> like, no, you fall and it's okay. I'm like, yeah. no, screw that. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm gonna get up. Um, but anyways, back to, yeah. so I kind of want to hone in a little bit more and be a little bit more specific with triathlon. Mm -hmm. Um, so how I'm doing it is I, I've already chosen, uh, early season Ironman, which sometimes is a love hate when you live in the Cape or on the Cape or anywhere, anywhere in New England, North, North, (laughs) yeah, North, anywhere North. I'm already like, okay, I need to make a uh, training camp here. here. (laughs) Yeah. Um, but yeah, so my, my goals are to really focus a little bit more on Ironman and then some of the gravel races that I really, really love, which the first one is Unbound. I just love that race. Um, it's a good challenge for me, and I, I want to go back to that one. I'm still debatable about Leadville, um, up and down with that, because that is yeah. a race that, you know, I did do really well last year for me, and I felt I gave it a lot, and so I... I will most likely have a slot that I might defer. And part uh, of that is also the reason of your husband too, because he's thinking of doing it next year. Oh yeah. And maybe we can make it a big family trip. Oh, okay. <laughs> you don't want me to do Leadville. I'll be crying on Columbine. Yeah, yeah. I'll just be like, just somebody come get me. That's it. I'll just sit there and just cry. It'll be a good day. Yeah. So I'm not like last year, because I was part of Lifetime Grand Prix in the year prior, I kind of had, set dates already yeah. the race is already set and right now i don't i literally just have ironman south africa that's kind of what i'm focused on and that's it that's that's all mm-hmm. i want to think about and if that goes well or doesn't go well then i go to the next thing that's kind of cool yeah i like that and i used to race like that a lot especially when i was going through lines because i didn't know what i could do and i had some of the best years uh, doing that so i kind of want to go back to that thought process so mm-hmm. that's short great. term outlooks oh i like it yeah. i like it yeah because you've had to do some really long-term planning for so long well i didn't really like i just had things that i was on the schedule you mm-hmm. know and it's like i wanted to do the series but then it really sets you with it, it basically sets your year for you like i couldn't do certain ironmans because of certain days that the other races were on or you know if i wanted to go do the series i couldn't you know, that race was a week before an Ironman and it kind of messes that Ironman up. And I, and my love is Ironman. Like it really yeah. is. So, um, I kind of want to get back to that and just use the gravel races as, um, an adjunct again versus like trying to do everything. Now, what about the new Ironman series? What is that called? I forget the name. Of... I don't know. Ironman Pro Series, but it's, it's just, it's 15 or 16 races around the world where you can get prize money. And I think it's fantastic, but I'm like, of course, money is money. Like we all know money is money and mm-hmm. it's great to have, but it's not something that's on my radar. Okay. My radar is, is personal. Like I really mm-hmm. just want to get to Nice. I yeah. want to do that race. I don't, I've always wanted to do Nice. And now that it's the world championship, it's like, wow, I, that would be awesome. Like, I just want to experience that. And I know that I'm really good at climbing and um for the bike and it's it, it's always been a race on my radar and i, I actually was going to do that race anyway and there's 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 an iron man niece in june that is that is actually on our the, on our docket mm-hmm. to do as a pro so that could be an option as well um to to use as a like a precursor if if i get the slot early or not so well i just watched the two and a half hour documentary on the world championships because mm-hmm. they went back and forth between mm-hmm. nice and kona and they showed a lot of footage from the nice bike course looks awesome, eh? it looks mostly awesome <laughs> <laughs> i would climb the heck out of that and then like it's i would definitely. need i would need new brakes by the end of it you should have seen me going down the keen yeah, descent i yeah. was like have a good day everybody as they went by me no but it looks beautiful it looked yeah. really fascinating with the four loop run yeah 
That was yeah. really interesting. I love loops. Yeah, you, you do. Just get to see people. You got to, it was it was almost like somebody in the documentary, it's not a spoiler because whatever, said that it was like one of the announcers said it was like running on Elite Drive four times. Uh, see, so yeah. Cool. So you yeah. can't so that was kind of that was interesting to me. Um, and the other thing part mm-hmm. of my my season this year is to, I want to do races that I've always wanted to do. Yeah. That I've never done. So I've always, always wanted to do Ironman South Africa. I've just always wanted to go there. And it's like, you know what? It's either that or Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I, know the I have the ability to go to South Africa. I've connected with the local people that are there. Like, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. I'm super excited about that versus going to texas where i had a terrible swim because i was frozen and my body shut down and yeah was like, i'm not going back <laughs> yeah and then we're gonna go to nice and i'm yeah. gonna go and we're gonna get croissant rompers <laughs> and uh we gotta do the rompers gotta do the romper something you know, some kind of I mean, a we, french we a lot of a lot of people i saying, know we had awesome so we'll get French rompers. <laughs> I'm all in as your, uh, I don't really have a desire to do Nice because. Maybe after you see it though. Well, yeah, that is true. So maybe, I don't know. But in watching that documentary, because at Kona, I was like, I'm never coming back here. This race is so hard, <laughs> you know. And then I watched that documentary. I was like, oh, maybe I'll go maybe. back. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I love. I love that goal, even though when we talked about process, I love that outcome goal of Nice only because it everybody should have a, a goal to strive for. Some type of carrot. Mm-hmm. Always. And you need to speak it into existence. Yeah. And and knowing that as long as you tried your hardest, which of course you yeah. will, that that's what, that, like Lindsay said in her sharing of her favorite podcast, let the chips fall where and they I may. I think that's, that's where people have to really look at is like, if you give it your best, that's, that's all you can yes. do. Yes, you can be sad that maybe your goal that you had you didn't get or you did get, but in the end, it doesn't change who you are. And I think what changes you is you giving it your all. Like it truly does. Like, like this year, I gave what I could at Cozumel, and I missed a slot by one. And yeah, I was I cried at the end. I really did because I get emotional, and it it, it was meaningful to me. But I'm okay. Like, yeah, I I I did what I could that day. I know I did. I I had a shitty glue basically that I was a little frustrated at because I maybe I maybe could have gained two minutes on that run from the amount of times I had to stop and quickly stretch which I still would have been for but you don't know that because sometimes the reset brings your heart rate down yeah. and yeah. and maybe that's you ran true. stronger that's true as that as well and mm-hmm. it's like you know it's like yeah, uh, like a- I look back and I had Oh, I mean, there was no swims. <laughs> <laughs> I, had the, I nailed that bike. I had the best bike. You did slit. nail that bike. bike split. I was in the game that entire bike race. And you had the fastest bike split at yeah. Placid. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm I, very proud of that because I literally gave it what I personally could. And I and I, I know my biking is finally back to what it was. And um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you look, you just look back at races where I, where you failed in quotations because you didn't get that outcome goal. But in the end, it's like, man, be proud of that. Like, you be proud of what you did. Like, like same thing with you and Kona. Like, mm-hmm. you 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 went into that race with a, a shitty back, and like, yeah, like we didn't know it was broken. Yeah, but, I mean, <laughs> we did back, not. I was so proud of you. Like, I know. When I saw you on the Queen K, and you just struck me. Like, what did you do? I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> I was it was so fun to watch because I waited and waited and <laughs> waited and but waited. It's, it's not because you were out there forever. No. I didn't know where you were. And then I saw you and then I saw your little leg. <laughs> and, I just, like, <laughs> and I was just super proud of that. And it's like you got to world championships. I you know. finished that race. And yeah, and it wasn't it was even that hard. far off my placid time. Yeah, no, and it was hard. Yeah, for sure. And I, you did that swim. You were I, so worried about that swim. I know. <laughs> That turned out to be the best part. It was the, it was slow, but it was the best part. It was uh, in terms of like the bike was hard. The run was certainly hard because of my well the back issue. But uh, but yeah, I think it's about doing hard things. Like we challenge ourselves, and I I think that's why I'm fired up right now about that is because uh, because of the comments of my dad and my mom when I really had to like it it really triggered me as my as my young girl with them because I always wanted to prove myself to my dad. And it was just like, I, they, they, the, the concept of like really trying your best and like 
wherever the chips fall, like that's, that's what I'm all about. And they, what got me was they, they don't, they don't quite understand that. Yeah. You know, it's what they haven't, they, they haven't experienced it almost, you know? So in the hidden potential, I'm almost, I just finished the book or almost finished. I think there's like a, a long epilogue is they talk about what drives you and there's all sorts of things. And one of them is the naysayers mm. um, for people when people don't think you can do something or like they think you shouldn't. Oh, that was my childhood. Yeah. My so that's what drove you. And that's part of hidden potential, but there's a, that's a, we'll talk about that when we talk about that book. It's so funny when you talk about, you think 2024 is like about challenging yourself. And I was going to joke to you that one of my goals for 2024 is to finally do a down river swim race. <laughs> I want less challenge in the swim. Thank you very much. So I've never done a down a downstream. I know I've never done a, all these years in triathlon. Like I've never done a down. I've had a couple races in the ocean where you're kind of going with the current, not as much as Cozumel. I did sign up for Ironman California. No, I signed up for Ironman California, but like. Um, no, but the person that should know about this. Business, oh, I did tell my husband like a week after I did it. I was like, so um, I also am signed up for Lake Placid. And both of these, I want to, I can defer one because, or move it to a different race because I'm just not sure health wise where I'm going to be. And I didn't want to rush the process. But anyway, like you have the options. To yeah. One. And Ironman California has intrigued me. They've had some weird weather luck, but that mm -hmm. swim is like, you know, you could put a, yeah. potato chip bag in there and like yeah, yeah maybe I'll beat idea. maybe I'll beat the dog <laughs> but um but so and as we you know as we think about wrapping this up um one of the things as coaches I leave a big note in training peaks uh, January 1st for my athletes and so here are some of the things I left and as we leave you um on this uh, January 1st, 2024, and whenever, or the beginning of January, whenever you're listening to this, to give you some things to think about as you head into 2024. And some of them are actually themes of what we just talked about. Some of them are themes of the podcast that we just done, like the patience one, which is the first one. Um, so first of all, remember in 2024, that patience, consistency, and belief will be key factors in reaching your goals. Number two, we are not striving for perfection. We are striving for growth and progress. So remember that. And also remember that number three, missing one workout does not derail a week, a month, or a race build. Okay? Don't sweat it. However, we're going to be real here. <laughs> missing a lot of workouts will affect your program if you have a program, any program. Um, it might be in the way your coach can progress you into next week or the way we as coaches or and as athletes, it might be the way you approach your next race or things like that. So if, uh, you know, and which leads me to when shit hits the fan and you miss a bunch of workouts, health, injury, family, work, um, you have to readjust. You readjust your week, your month, your goals, whatever it is. All right. And you remind yourself that this is where we are and we can only control the controllables. Mm -hmm. So just remember that that's also something that I have gotten really good at understanding, controlling the controllables. Um, and then, you know, if you do have a coach communicating with that coach, we've talked about that a lot. And finally, Everybody out there, including reminding ourselves, which we've talked about, is we do all this for fun, for our health, to challenge ourselves, and we do it because we love it. And so we're all just along for the ride, whatever your goals are. Make 2024 the best you can, working where you are, thinking about where you want to be. And Happy New Year. Thank you for being here for our 100th episode. If there is anything you would like to tell us, a guest you would like on, a topic you would like covered, please email us at iracelikeagirl at gmail.com. And Happy New Year, everyone. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening, and we hoped you enjoyed it. You can find us at amywoodsfitness.com and angelanath.com. We'd love to hear from you.